Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a great pleasure uh, to uh, introduce uh, uh, this webinar on uh, pulmonary rehabilitation and uh, with a focus on uh, COVID-19 patients. Uh, so uh, my name is uh, Laurent Morin, Medical Affairs Director of Physio Assist, and uh, I will introduce um, uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, so let's show my screen with a few slides. So um, post-COVID-19 uh, patients uh, in a pulmonary rehabilitation, uh, it's a high focus uh, today uh, and probably uh, one uh, of the major uh, public uh, health issue uh, we have currently. Uh, as the uh, last uh, ARS conference uh, uh, told us uh, a few months ago, uh, there is a, a, a major concern uh, on uh, this uh, uh, populations, uh, and uh, we know that uh, uh, more than 50% of uh, patients uh, affected with COVID-19 are uh, and who have been hospitalized uh, for severe or critical uh, disease have still impaired lung function uh, and uh, uh, many persistent respiratory symptoms, uh, severe fatigue, uh, and a reduced. Uh, uh, physical uh, capability and uh, several weeks uh, and uh, even several months uh, after the acute phase. Uh, so these patients are characterized by the uh, mainly exercise dyspnea that impacts significantly uh, their physical activity. And uh, we find also uh, uh, persistent gas exchange impairment uh, and also air trapping uh, in a high uh, proportion of these patients, uh, suggesting that uh, uh, these patients, post COVID 19 patients, are uh, affected uh, uh, by a small airway disease. Uh, and in, uh, in, in, in a large uh, proportion of patients, we find also uh, persistent pulmonary uh, damage uh, with uh, wound glass uh, opacities, uh, consolidation and reticulation. Uh, in a large uh, percentage of, uh, of patients, and these patients have also a high rate of uh, rehospitalization uh, after uh, their uh, acute phase. Um, most of these patients uh, are eligible for uh, a pulmonary rehabilitation, uh, and the uh, ARS conference uh, confirmed that uh, pulmonary rehabilitation improved significantly uh, respiratory symptoms, uh, uh, lung function parameters, and fatigue uh, in these patients. Uh, recently, um, uh, uh, an article uh, very interesting uh, published uh, in Nature Communications uh, highlighted the, uh, the, uh, the impact of SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus uh, on the uh, the uh, impairment of mucociliary uh, clearance uh, in, uh, in patients affected by uh, COVID-19 disease. And uh, it's, a, it's a new uh, pathway uh, that uh, clearly uh, uh, reveal that uh, the virus uh, is able to, uh, uh, to uh, infect a multiciliated cell uh, that leads to a rapid loss of the ciliary layer and that results in impaired mucociliary clearance. Uh, so these findings uh, light uh, pathogenic mechanisms uh, that may promote viral spread uh, in, the, in the lungs and uh, increase uh, risk also of secondary infection uh, in these patients. So we, uh, uh, we had the opportunity uh, to, uh, to work uh, with uh, a national reference center uh, in, uh, in rehabilitation in Poland. And Professor Jan Stieglenheit, uh, head of the rehabilitation department, uh, defined uh, last year, just a few months after the start of COVID-19 uh, epidemic, a multidisciplinary rehabilitation model adapted for post-COVID-19 uh, patients and who suffer from persistent respiratory symptoms, uh, especially dyspnea, uh, disability uh, fat uh, fatigue, cognitive problems, uh, and especially uh, with uh, uh, 
uh, issues uh, uh, with memory and attention deficit disorders. So this program uh, was implemented uh, in the Ministry of Internal Affairs Administration Specialist Hospital in Glucolasi in Poland. And uh, more than 2,000 uh, post-COVID-19 patients have been treated uh, with a current active file of 120 patients. So collaboration between uh, MES Hospital and Physioacid was very successful as the pulmonary reputation uh, department had the opportunity to test uh, Simiox technology and uh, evaluate uh, benefits of this therapy in a survey of uh, uh, 16 post-COVID-19 patients uh, referred uh, to uh, pulmonary rehabilitation. These patients had uh, uh, mucus problems and uh, two groups of patients have been compared. Eight patients treated with semiox therapy uh, added to a standard of care and eight patients uh, uh, treated with standard of care alone without semiox. Professor Jan Steglenak and his team uh, will develop uh, in this webinar uh, later uh, this uh, rehabilitation model program. So the, the two groups um, had a similar baseline characteristic uh, and the results of this uh, evaluation showed that Simiox added to standard of care uh, improved more significantly than standard of care alone uh, deep near and fatigue uh, evaluated with box scale, uh, exertional oxygen saturation, uh, and walking distance uh, uh, during the six minute walking test, and also uh, exercise intensity. Uh, similar results um, uh, were found in the different subgroups, and especially uh, in subgroups uh, without uh, chronic uh, bronchitis. Uh, we had uh, comparable uh, data between patients with or without uh, COPD uh, in this study. Uh, so that's a result uh, very, uh, very relevant, um, uh, will be uh, uh, confirmed um, in a letter in a larger trial, uh, and especially in a well, uh, powerful design random, random mass control trial uh, that will uh, implement in uh, uh, hospital, uh, MEAS, uh, with the collaboration of uh, Professor Stegenak uh, and his team. So now I would like to uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lukas Minawoski. Uh, Dr. Lukas Minawoski, you are a professor assistant at Medical University at, uh, of uh, Berylustok uh, in Poland uh, at the second department of lung disease and tuberculosis. And uh, uh, I would like to ask you uh, two questions. Um, uh, following um, uh, the, the discussion we had last time uh, during the, the previous uh, webinar. Uh, so we, we, we know that uh, severe COVID-19 patients uh, with uh, acute respiratory failure uh, can benefit from uh, high flow uh, nasal cannula oxygen therapy. Uh, and it's a very uh, efficient uh, uh, treatment uh, in, in these patients. And this treatment may improve also uh, mucociliary clearance uh, by uh, humidifying uh, lung secretions. And my question is the following. Could there be any value in combining uh, high flow uh, therapy uh, with Simiox uh, in patients with chest congestion? Thank you for your invitation. Hello, everyone. Uh, indeed, I'm an immunologist, and my primary experience with Simiox consists of the experience coming from cystic fibrosis patients. Uh, those patients have, of course, impaired mucociliary clearance, but in those patients, we used a Simiox in combination with uh, physiotherapy, uh, postural drainage, with uh, half techniques, and also as an assistance for a bronchoscopy especially in the most severe cases with a very low FEV1 and a very low DLCO values for the patients who are, for example, awaiting for a lung transplant. In those patients, a uh, combination of physiotherapy, CMOX and uh, bronchoscopy will allow us to provide a prolonged care 
before uh, uh, lung transplant can occur. Of course, in patients after COVID-19, bronchoscopy is not recommended because of the high uh, burden of the viral infection uh, for a immunologist for a bronchoscopist. Uh, that is why if uh, a patient is uh, having also a concomitant disease like COPD, who is, which is also impairing the mucociliary clearance, a need for increased uh, removal of excess of sputum is, uh, is inevitable. That is why in this place, a CMOX can provide you a, a good quality removal of, of, uh, of sputum without any uh, increased uh, problems for, uh, for the care team. Moreover, in the physiotherapy uh, of the patients after COVID-19, when the uh, respiratory system is healing, and when the excess of mucus is one of the symptoms of the healing of the respiratory system, the clearance can be uh, also increased without any instrumentation of respiratory system. That is why um, we use in post-COVID-19 patients uh, uh, any kind of physiotherapy also consisting of uh, instrumentally assisted physiotherapy uh, because we see that it's, uh, it's beneficial and the patients are generally perceiving this kind of therapy much better than, the, uh, for example, just uh, physical activity alone. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I have a second question for you. Uh, some post-COVID-19 patients refer to pulmonary rehabilitation, uh, have still pulmonary uh, damage, uh, especially lung gloss opacity or reticulations. Uh, are there any uh, contraindications for airway clearance uh, uh, in these patients with fibrotic lag changes? Or uh, can these patients benefit from CMOX therapy without any limitation? What do you think? Was Actually, uh, uh, one can think about some limitations that can occur in patients who are receiving a CMOX therapy. Those will be patients who have a persistent uh, expectoration of blood with the sputum. Uh, one of our patients, actually, who is currently contaminated with uh, with COVID nineteen, and he was using uh, CMOX right now. He because of the hemoptysis, he had to stop the the physiotherapy. So general uh, uh, general contradictions to use instrumentally assisted physiotherapy would be the same as in in, in other uh, cases of. In, in which the patients are not recommended to have a physio chest physiotherapy. So it would be a, a, a recognition of pneumothorax, it would be hemoptysis. But uh, actually in COVID-19 patients, pneumothorax or hemoptysis are treated rather well and they uh, escalate rather quickly, especially with the usage of uh, systemic glucocosteroids and uh, oxygen therapy with, with high flow. And then, as quickly as possible, we uh, reset and uh, and use the physiotherapy again in those patients, uh, because uh, if we see that there are prolonged symptoms of COVID-19, the patients would greatly benefit uh, from the physiotherapy. Abandoning of physiotherapy, unnecessarily abandoning the physiotherapy, is a rather uh, a kind of a failure in those patients. Thank you very much, Dr. Minarowski, for uh, very, uh, very good uh, uh, insights. Uh, so I have the pleasure to, uh, to introduce Professor Jan Steglenak. And Professor, uh, you will talk about the indications of CMOX therapy uh, for post-COVID-19 uh, uh, patients, uh, and also for uh, patients with chronic lung disease. Uh, we will talk about the, the selection of these patients, and you will explain also the similarities and the difference uh, in terms of pulmonary rehabilitation between post-COVID-19 patients and patients with chronic lung disease. Thank you, uh, Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to introduce a role and indication of uh, pulmonary rehabilitation in the management of post-COVID-19 patients. This short speech is an attempt to show necessity of physical rehabilitation for individuals after COVID-19 
disease and underline a purpose of complex therapeutic program. The introduction of a holistic respiratory rehabilitation program for SARS-CoV-2 patients with combined treatment focused on the increase in the exercise capacity, recovery of pulmonary function, and mental health support developed by a multidisciplinary team of healthcare professionals appears vital. And the clinical experience to date indicates the need for the earliest possible implementation of physiotherapy in hospital wards and intensive care units where COVID-19 patients are treated and include convalescence, helping them to regain full fitness and overcome the effects of the disease. A large number of uh, people with long lasting symptoms indicates the need to introduce appropriate rehabilitation programs, including pulmonary rehabilitation after COVID-19 disease, aimed at eliminating complication and reducing the risk of disability. Given the demonstrated need for rehabilitation efforts should be made to use a wide range of rehabilitation process based on the type of symptoms and dysfunction that have occurred and persist. However, it appears that due to the magnitude and type of the phenomenon, attention should be given to specialized rehabilitation, particularly rehabilitation related to the respiratory system. The particular needs for pulmonary rehabilitation are indicated not only by the persistence of symptoms after coronavirus infection, but also by the increasing incidence of chronic respiratory disease and its possible exacerbation after COVID-19 infection. Physiotherapy programs should be tailored to the patient's needs and capabilities. Encouraging physical activity after coronavirus infection should take into account learning how to breathe properly and eliminate errors that determine the formation of abnormal breathing habits leading the disorders of ventilation. A common mistake is to breathe shallow to frequent and ineffective, mainly throughout the mouth. Disturbances and abnormalities often concern the depth and frequency of breathing, the breathing pattern, the way of breathing, the ratio of inhalation to exhalation, chest movement, etc. It is common, for example, with a sedentary lifestyle, pain or chronic fatigue. Disturbed breathing mechanism may be associated with sequent, subsequent impairment of ventilation and associated reduction in exercise capacity. The stationary post-COVID-19 pulmonary rehabilitation program approved by the Ministry of Health implemented in September 2020 at the hospital in Gulhoase is based on a comprehensive model of patient management. This procedure is based on a strict qualification process, a specific and highly individualized treatment program and the regular evaluation of the observed clinical result among COVID-19 survivors with varied complication. The center provides continuous rehabilitation for 100 patients from across the country. So far, over 1,000 people have participated in the program. This program has been implemented in Poland to be one of first such program for those suffering after COVID-19. Most post-COVID-19 patients referred to the inpatient rehabilitation had symptoms of dyspnea impaired ventilatory function due to retained secretion and difficulty speeding. Respiratory physiotherapy included uh, inhalation and compression during postural drainage. In addition, a new method of bronchial drainage was introduced using the CMOX, which has been used in patients with, for example, COPD and allows for efficient removal of the residual secretion. 
using the mechanism for correction, breeding mistakes, and learning to bread properly is also achievable throughout comprehensive therapy using the CMOX. Pulmonary rehabilitation using the CMOX device has been shown to be effective in patients with coronavirus infection in our center. The results of the program indicate the CMOX therapy provides safe and effective bronchial drainage in post-COVID-19 patients with a history of retinal secretion contributing, contributing to increased treatment efficiency, including improved exercise tolerance. Clinical experience to date suggests that CMOX may be a useful device in the comprehensive rehabilitation of patients after a coronavirus infection. The sum up among people who underwent the stationary post-COVID-19 pulmonary rehabilitation program in glucolase, an improvement was observed in all examined aspects, an increase in exercise tolerance, a reduction in musculoskeletal elements, and improvement in lung ventilation, a reduction in dyspnea, and an improvement of the mental health, which improves the quality of life. We would like to present the post-COVID patient with indication to the therapy of CMOX. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we are going uh, now to watch uh, a replay of uh, CMOX uh, airway clearance uh, session. And uh, so we are now to launch the video. Welcome on the practical part of the use of the CMOX that we'll make on our patient that have been chosen by uh, historical data and interview. Uh, also, our patient have a problem with asthma from uh, several years and uh, she's after co half year after COVID. Mm, she has a hypertension and a problem with uh, abundant and uh, viscous mucus. CMOX is a medical device that generates the pneumatic impulse and that reach uh, the lungs, the patient's lungs, and liquefy the mucus and help to rid off by coughing uh, by patients. First session of the CMOX is very important. Uh, we should inform and guide our patient how to use uh, the device properly to make the another sessions more effective and how to use uh, the full potential of the device. First of all, we have to check the nose. Uh, so we ask the patient to make a few repeated of the breath. So, uh, inhale and exhale through the nose, the mouth is closed. Once again, okay, and then we should uh, make it uh, through the one nostril release. So inhale and ex exhale, and then check the another one. Yes, uh, now we taking the mouthpiece. We open it, give it to the patient. And we'll do it uh, with, without the device, so only on the uh, mouthpiece. The first uh, important thing is to uh, put the mouthpiece properly. So we're saying that the thinnest part uh, should be on the mouth and the rest, the slight uh, thing, 
uh, should be light beneath the uh, tongue. Yes. And we ask the patient to make a few repetitions. Inhale and exhale. Mm -hmm. Dech, even dech. The very helpful thing that is uh, added to the device is the uh, remote control that we give to the patient. And it only has one button, so it's very easy to use. Uh, we're saying that uh, on the exhale phase, the patient should uh, press the button and then the, the CMOX generate the impulse. The vibration that patients should feel it only on the chest, only on the uh, pulmonary segment. So now, when we check the uh, nostrils and the upper uh, lung tract, we can uh, connect the rest uh, pieces. So we have a tube and a special filter. <coughs> you put the mouthpiece on the end and the filter. Yes. Oh, there is. Exactly. Okay. On. And we have uh, important things that we have to tell our patient uh, how to use it in the future. Uh, first of all, we have the cycle. Uh, we uh, set on the third program uh, that give us the 10 uh, exhale phases. Uh, power, it should be on the beginning on 25%, so the lower uh, level. And uh, we can ask the patient uh, to regulate uh, the power on the next session, but First, uh, first session should start from the 25%. Uh, and the, uh, the another one uh, will be uh, changed. It depends on the um, patient's condition. Uh, and the last uh, is performance. Um, it li there's a lights, green lights that uh, they showed our patient when he, she, uh, make it properly. So inhale phase and exhale phase, especially exhale phase, right. And when we have uh, red uh, lights, it should say our patient should stop uh, the exhale phase and uh, release the button. So, um, it is. Uh, Please uh, ask the patient to put properly mouthpiece uh, and make ex inhale dech, and exhale and then press the button once again. Once again. Hmm. Have a green lights. Okay, uh, important is to say our patient that uh, exhale phase should be very comfortable. Uh, and once again, we ask the patient to make the uh, another. We have a green light, so everything is okay. Good. We can combine the CMOX session with exercises when we want to separate the left or right lung. Um, first of all, we have to check it, which uh, side is uh, worst. So we ask the patient to make a deep breath. We put the hand on the chest and we feel. Now we check uh, from the back. 
I make the same, so deep breath, and I check. Okay. First option of the exercise is to uh, elevate the right arm. Uh, so I ask the patient to make it with inhale phase and down with the exhale phase. And I ask patient to make it a uh, few times. Inhale and exhale. Okay. And now we compare it with the CMOX. Mm -hmm. Inhale, dech. Inhale. Jeszcze raz. Once again, once again. Czyli do góry, dech. Inhale, and now we activate the device. Mm -hmm. Chwila przerwa. And now. Another option is to lie on the side. So we ask the patient to lie on the, in this case, uh, we choose the uh, right side. We we'll concentrate on the left side. So we uh, set the, head, and we make sure that our patient lie, lie in the comfortable uh, position. And once again, we ask to make inhale and exhale. And slowly exhale, push the button. Okay. And again, make inhale and exhale. Correct. And the third option uh, we choose is uh, on the sitting side, is sitting position. Uh, and when we want to separate uh, and work only on the front of the chest, we ask the patient to uh, put the arms uh, behind. And rest is the same, so we make inhale, and exhale, push the button. Inhale. I last time. Okay. We of course uh, control the performance, uh, so we remember when we have the green lights, everything, everything is okay. When we have a red light, we can uh, signal our patient to stop uh, the treatment and release the button. Typical session of the CMOX consists of uh, three to five cycles with uh, six to ten exhalation. Um, mostly we choose uh, the morning and uh, the next session the same day uh, on the afternoon. Uh, mostly we suggest to make it before the activity, physical activity. And my patient said that after second session uh, she feel much better, the, she less cough and uh, she could make uh, the same activity uh, much more effective. Use of the Simox is uh, very easy and even patients say so. Uh, we have uh, just two options to set, so uh, we can let our patient make it uh, alone. But uh, it is good to stay with him to make um, possible correction. Uh, for example, in the, with mouthpiece or with uh, 
proper exhalation and inhalation. This is very easy and uh, they are satisfied uh, with uh, the sessions, with this treatment. We suggest uh, 10 sessions and we, I think it's enough to see the difference between uh, the first session and the last session. And uh, even my patients say that uh, she sees the difference. Uh, after the second session, she cough less, and even her colleague from the room said uh, the same, that there's a difference in her health. And I think that's all. Thank you for your attention and best wishes. We, we, are, we have now our question and answer uh, session, and uh, we have the, the pleasure to, uh, uh, to, uh, to introduce uh, the different speakers that will answer to the to questions that, uh, that raised uh, during our last uh, CMIRX uh, webinar. Um, and so Dr. Bogac, uh, Dr. Lunieski, and, uh, and Yasek Saadjak, from a professor studying uh, team uh, will uh, will answer to the to your questions and give you uh, some uh, insight about your use of simiox uh, therapy uh, uh, in, in patients um, so we had a, a lot of questions we we uh, you, you had already uh, answer par par partially to some of them uh, but i think it's it, it's good to uh, to come back uh, on, on, on this topic, uh, could you uh, uh, explain or re-explain what is a typical CMIOX session, uh, especially the number of uh, exhales per cycle or many cycles? Uh, could you uh, come back uh, to uh, uh, to this uh, to this topic? Okay, uh, the typical sessions. Uh include uh, 10, uh, 10 sessions, 10 treatment. Um, we can divide them into one per day or we can uh, make a three to five sessions. Um, per day with 45 to one minute pause uh, between each other. And uh, mostly we use uh, 10 exhalations, as I said on the film. Uh, we can use also six, but uh, we use ten, so maximum. Um, and also we make it on the afternoon, uh, so after uh, patient uh, walk up and wake up and uh, come to us and make uh, the first first session, so first uh, two two cycles or three cycles. The cycles, uh, when we saw on the movie, it's, uh, this is the cycle on the left, uh, so it contains uh, 10 repetitions. And uh, on the first session, we set uh, the lowest uh, level of the power, so 25%. And then uh, we make it uh, 25%, 50%. It depends on the on of the comfort of the patient and condition health condition. Right. In your experience, uh, what 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 is the tolerance uh, of CMOX uh, therapy uh, in your patients? Do you do you have some uh, some uh, good experience uh, with uh, comfort uh, tolerance? Do you have some patients that have uh, some difficulties uh, about? Uh, uh, tolerance of, of the device. What's your experience about tolerance? Um, they tolerance it very well. Very well. Uh, maybe there was uh, on the beginning some complications with uh, the older patients that they um, have uh, difficulties in uh, combine and connect uh, the exhale phase with uh, with uh, press the button of the CMOX. But it was only on the beginning. And the first session and fourth session, they said it was very easy. I don't know how I could, uh, don't understand it. So, uh, yes, most of the patients say it's very easy to, to operate, uh, to set. And uh, 
we sometimes they cor we sometimes correct them, but uh, mostly it's not necessary. They understand everything what we say on the first session. So as I was saying, uh, the first session is very important to to explain them everything and uh, to make the effects more effective. Uh, from your experience, do you do in orders, uh, especially with uh, uh, the edge? Uh, do, do you think the edge uh, uh, is not uh, an issue, especially in orders? Uh, do you have a uh, older uh, old patients uh, uh, in your um, in your department that can are able to uh, to handle easily the device? Um, sometimes the age. But age is not a limit. Uh, we have to be patient for our patients, uh, so they will ex they will understand everything. Maybe not on the first session, but on the second and third, they understand everything. Especially when this device is very easy to to operate. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Uh, another question is the, the frequency, the use, uh, the uh, in usage of the device. Uh, so you, you told us that, uh, uh, that depends of the of the patients. But um, well, how many times the patients uh, can use the Simeox uh, during the day, uh, and what the factors that are influencing uh, this usage? Is, is it uh, chest congestion, so the volume of lung secretion, and um, uh, how do you uh, select uh, the the frequency of uh, number of used uh, of Simeox uh, in these patients? Uh, on the beginning, uh, we are trying to um, to find our patients' issue, uh, but. Uh, Mm, the patients have to have uh, the problem with uh, the mucus, and uh, if he tolerate, he or she tolerate uh, the whole treatment. So the first session for him is very comfortable, and he say he feel much better after the this session, this cycle. Uh, we suggest to come back in this same day, so we make them on the next day. We make uh, make it twice per day, and if everything is okay, we uh, set up uh, the power so from 10, 25 percent to fifty, and we stay with uh, two repetitions per day, and uh, we can make uh, mm, we can make three cycles mm, on the morning and three cycles. For, for uh, afternoon, so six cycles per day. If he tolerate and he say is everything okay, no complications after after these sessions. So it's very individual. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we have we have the question um, a question of, uh, from the audience. Uh, could the patient, um, if, if the patient does Simeox uh, alone, so could, could the patient use the Simeox uh, alone without uh, uh, any uh, assistance, or uh, is it mandatory to uh, to have the, the guidance of a uh, respiratory uh, therapist? Mm -hmm. What is your opinion? Mm -hmm. uh, like in the whole treatment session, not only connected with the Simeox, but I think uh, always uh, therapists, physiotherapists should stay uh, next to the patient and control his uh, process. And also here, we should uh, stay with the patient on the first two, three sessions to correct him eventually. And uh, yeah, two, three sessions uh, to stay with him is, uh, I think, enough. Because uh, Simox is very easy to, to use, so uh, we, ha we have to concentrate on this inhale and exhale phase uh, to uh, coordinate it with uh, 
with this um, use of the device. So we have to compare these uh, two things. Uh, in inhale the ex breath uh, phases and use of the device. So yes, the therapist should stay with him, with patient, but not whole 10 sessions and not only one session. Mm. Three, four, enough. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so you, um, we have a, a question, uh, one question uh, about uh, contour indication uh, of Simbox therapy. So, uh, Simeox uh, therapy has no absolute contraindications, but uh, uh, we, are, we, are, we have to be very cautious uh, uh, in some situations, and especially if the patients uh, uh, have a, a severe hemoptysis. Um, what, what's your uh, opinion on that? Uh, if, you have a, if you have a one patient that have uh, uh, some uh, uh, blood uh, in uh, in lung secretions. Uh, what's your uh, uh, attitude uh, uh, in front of uh, of that? Uh, uh, in front of a patients with uh, uh, hemoptysis. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Tiaz Kuniewski, and I. Well, the answer of the question is very interesting because, as you said, um, there are no known absolute. Uh, contraindication to the um, use of semiox therapy. Uh, you can find on the chart uh, actually three um, relative contraindications for that. But there is a question on the chart, what about uh, post-surgery patients? I think uh, that as long as patient can cooperate and uh, um, can breathe independently with stabilization of the scar, which seems to be important in that case, uh, the semiox therapy would be uh, very, very good for, for, for those kind of patients uh, after uh, surgery. Mm, but we have to remember about uh, the stabilization of the scar. You can use it in your hand or uh, ask the patient to do that or teach them, as my colleague said, that uh, this device is very, very easy uh, to use and uh, one, two lessons is enough to uh, to get everything about this uh, therapy. Great. <clears throat> uh, do, you meet, uh, do you meet any situation where, uh, where a patient after Simox therapy are the uh, a worsening of uh, of uh, of bleeding in uh, in this question uh, is it something that you have uh, you have already uh, made or not? Mm. No, um, um, that would be very uh, that would be contraindication actually. But uh, there are no such a thing as bleeding or pain in our patients. We have to realize that. Uh, exhale is done without any force and um, in a very easy way so uh, as um, if the patient is breathing independently as i said um, and um, can do that without without any pain or uh, such a thing so i think it's uh, it, it's good time to to to, to introduce that therapy mm. and we right. have to remember and we have to remember and it's also worth mentioning that uh, airway clearance techniques are needed to help prevent infection and improve lung function in each case mm. Yes, absolutely. It's a very important point. So you had the opportunity to to evaluate uh, in a pilot study the the benefits of SIPS. Uh, could you remind us uh, uh, which uh, uh, which chest physiotherapy uh, uh, did you use before introdu uh, introducing CIMOX therapy in your practice? Before the use of the, of CIMOX, uh, could we, uh, could you uh, uh, remind us uh, uh, the the, te the technique, our clients' techniques? Do, uh, did you use before CIMOX? 
in the past? Well, the uh, yeah, air claims techniques are uh, commonly known as uh, uh, chest clapping and uh, positioning uh, using the uh, force of the gravity to remove the uh, mucus out. So um, they are well known techniques, and this is uh, the new tool that we can use uh, in addition to that. Mm. What can I say, Jacek, maybe? Mm. Yeah, we was using the same, as Jacek say, <laughs> techniques. Mm. Also the inhalation, inhalation combined with the drainage positions and clapping the, the back. Mm. And <clears throat> so you, you have uh, evaluated CIMEOX uh, uh, in addition to, uh, to, to your uh, standard of care, uh, effectively clapping, uh, postural drainage. And uh, in your experience, uh, so uh, at the beginning of the webinar, uh, uh, I showed some, uh, some results uh, on that. Uh, which uh, added value uh, have you, uh, have you uh, experimented uh, with CIMOX compared to uh, conventional chest physiotherapy? What the, the benefits of CIMOX uh, in your patients uh, uh, compared to that, you what you did before introducing uh, CIMEOX in your practice? Uh, it's uh, much easier in use. Uh, we, as I say, after five, fifth session, uh, patient don't need new, don't need uh, uh, therapist, so he can do it alone. And then we, the physiotherapy can make something different in this time. Um, also, it is, uh, you can say, uh, much more efficient because uh, we can compare uh, uh, it's this signal, this pneumatic signal, uh, reach the distal part of the lungs. So sometimes we, can, we couldn't uh, make it by um, Te techniques that we use uh, before, so the clapping the back and uh, the drainage positions with uh, head uh, down. Mm. So yes, it's it's very different. Something new, uh, something when, that we will for sure use it in the future. Well, I would point out uh, two things. Uh, according to our research. Um, the well pulmonary reup with uh, the use of uh, simiox resulted in a significant prolongation of the distance achieved in six minute walk test. That's the first mm -hmm. thing, and the second one, uh, the improvement of oxygen saturation uh, during exercise was greater in simiox group than in the control group. Which we, which was uh, the control group, was the group when in which we used the, the standard techniques of airway clearance. So that was the main finding of uh, from 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 our studies. Mm. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have a question uh, about satisfaction uh, with the use of the device. Uh, could you tell us? Uh, from your opinion, why the best patients are satisfied uh, with this therapy? Um, could you uh, could you give us some uh, insight uh, on that? They are satisfied because uh, they see very quickly the difference before they started to use the CMOX and uh, after the second sessions, as my patient said on the recorded sessions, practical recorded session. And uh, they feel they that can uh, fight it without with uh, this uh, disease. So uh, they can uh, back to the normal work, normal uh, work they they do did uh, every day before the COVID. So they are determined to. Uh, find uh, the solution for the 
for the diseases and uh, that's what they satisfied so uh, quick uh, quick uh, results quick results what they see okay so fast uh, fast uh, recovering and uh... yes recovering fast recovering and good effects well um there's another if I can, of course, may I interrupt you, sir, for that? Uh, um, there's another issue that we should, I think, discuss because uh, um, smoking history uh, of the patients. Uh, well, it's um, there was a question um, how to decide which patient should be treated by CMOX uh, therapy. Uh, that's uh, I think it's obvious that um, where's the smoking history in our patients or we have patients who are really smokers or have uh, recent uh, smoking history, uh, we should um, think about that therapy. Uh, it appears that post-COVID patients who are active smokers or have a recent history of smoking should be enrolled in semiox therapy, although this requires further research, of course. Mm. Um, <clears throat> do you combine uh, semiox with uh, other airway clearance techniques in your practice? That's a mm -hmm. question from the audience. Uh, uh, could you repeat, please? Because could you, uh, could, uh, do you combine uh, semiox therapy with other airway clearance techniques? Uh, during uh, during airway clearance session, do you use other airway clearance techniques with Simiox? Yeah. In the meantime, yeah. yeah, sure, but w why not? I think it's worth to use everything that uh, can help um, um, to clear uh, airways. And uh, as I said, uh, we compare the effects of uh, using Simiox versus uh, other. Uh, um, techniques so so yeah why not mm. uh, <clears throat> a question uh, very specific <laughs> do you have uh, any experience with uh, uh, parkinson parkinson patients no <laughs> not no. yet no. Um, Sorry. And another question. Uh, yeah, just um, if there is a risk of uh, um, sputum retention in the bureau tree, uh, the use of semiox therapy uh, seems to be a good idea. Okay, thank you. Uh, from your opinion, uh, is it possible to use a semiox therapy uh, uh, through a tracheostomy cannula I'm not sure that you uh, you have already uh, tested it but uh, do you think it's possible uh, in, a, in patients with uh, tracheostomy hmm. well uh, I don't think it's possible that's my opinion so I <clears throat> divide its opinion too <laughs> yeah, but for uh, at this time we uh, we, we we don't have uh, evaluate uh, Simeox uh, uh, in in these uh, medical situations, uh, and so something that will be investigated uh, for the future. Uh, to come back to uh, to hemoc disease, uh, uh, if you have a, if one patient uh, has a. a a small quantity, a little blood in the in uh, uh, What's your uh, uh, what's your opinion? To to could we start the Simeox uh, therapy in patients even with small quant quantity of blood in sputum? Mm -hmm. Do you start or do you prefer to to postpone the the, the, the therapy? 
Okay, that's the situation that uh, needs uh, investigation. Uh, every time when the blood uh, appears in the uh, sputum, because we're talking about this kind of situation, right? Yeah, in patients yeah, that are very usually uh, some some blood, uh, a small a small uh, quantity, uh, uh, it's better. We can no, find. It the... comes, yeah, it may comes from. Um, well, not exactly uh, from the lungs, uh, but uh, yeah, that's the situation that require further uh, investigation. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, we we have uh, provided uh, uh, a guideline on, uh, regarding uh, the presence of uh, hemoptysis uh, in patients treated with simiox, and uh, if patients have. Uh, uh, a very few uh, quantity of blood uh, in sputum is not a contraindication, uh, but it's necessary to, uh, to, to follow strictly uh, the, 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 the evolution uh, of bleeding. Uh, if the, if, the, if the, 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 blood, uh, the bleeding stops, a uh, patient uh, continue uh, simiox therapy. If the bleeding uh, is worsening, uh, it's preferable to, to, to stop the therapy and to, to, ask, to ask for uh, medical advice uh, and to, to wait for a few days uh, before uh, uh, come back uh, on the therapy. Uh, but if, if the bleeding is, is, is important, uh, uh, moderate to severe hemop moderate to severe hemoptysis, uh, it's, it's better. Uh, to, to, to solve the, this problem uh, before uh, introduce uh, Simox uh, therapy. Okay, so I check if we have an additional question. Okay, uh, so we, we, have, uh, we have no more uh, questions. I would like to, to thank you uh, warmly uh, all the speakers. Uh, for this uh, very, uh, very good and very relevant uh, discussion on Simox therapy uh, in, uh, in post COVID 19 patients. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you very I, much. I hope we have uh, 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 great, uh, great thoughts in the future uh, about uh, Simox uh, in, uh, in other topics. Uh, so, thank you very much and have a very good day. And see you soon. Thank you.